and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Today we are talking about depth of field. I touched on it a little bit in my last video when we talked about exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So look back on that if you have any questions about those parts of exposure. Now on to depth of field. Depth of field is defined as the area of sharpness within a photograph that will appear in focus. In every picture, there is an area in front of your subject and an area behind your subject. Your choice as a photographer when determining your depth of field is to determine how large or small those areas of sharpness will be. Now how to manipulate your depth of field. As I said previously, in my last episode, I talked about aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Aperture is the number one determination factor of depth of field. Your focal length also comes into play, but for starters, we'll talk about aperture and f-stop. The greater the aperture number, so f22, f36, the more content, the larger depth of field, you will have within your image. Inversely, the smaller the f-stop number, so f2.8, just down on the low end, the smaller or the shallower the depth of field will be. Also, the closer you are to your subject, the shallower the depth of field. The farther away from your subject, the deeper or the larger the depth of field. This is where focal length comes into play. If you choose to manipulate your focal length, the zoom amount in your camera or the way that you frame or crop your image within your viewfinder. Now, if you're wondering, is the depth of field, the area of focus within your image, is that evenly distributed within your photograph? No, it is not. Typically, depth of field is divided by one third of sharpness in front of your image subject and two thirds of sharpness behind your subject with your subject as the main point of focus. A shallower depth of field will have your image subject very sharp and crispy and just really the focus point while all of the surrounding areas around your focus point are going to be blurred are going to be out of focus whereas a larger depth of field when we're talking about f22 f36 that is going to give you as much sharpness and content and detail within your image frame. So larger depth of field is used in landscape photography or big group photography where you want all of the information and all of the content you can possibly get within your frame, nice and sharp. So to put it all together, if you want a larger depth of field. You will need a higher f-stop number. You will need to move farther away from your subject and you will need to shorten your focal length. Whereas if you want a shallower depth of field, you will increase your focal length, decrease your aperture value number, and move closer to your subject you're photographing. So by selectively focusing on an object or a subject within your viewfinder frame, your camera will translate the aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and take into account the focal length and the distance you are from your subject or object to translate the depth of field. So let me give you an example. If you're standing in front of the Grand Canyon, and you would like to get a massive amount of content within that Grand Canyon, get all the colors, get all the different formations, 
what you would do is you would focus on the farthest away plateau, so across the Grand Canyon. You would selectively focus on that plateau. You would bump up your f-stop as high as you can, and you would manipulate your shutter speed based on the time of day or what kind of light environments you have, and then you would pull your focal length all the way back. This will give you an image that is as much content, as much detail that you can possibly get within that frame. So in that same scenario, let's talk about smaller depths of field. Say you were standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon and you look down beside you and there's a little bundle of flowers you wanna get a photo of with the Grand Canyon in the background. What you would do is you would selectively focus on those flowers, make sure to frame the Grand Canyon in the background, lower your f-stop number, and move as close as you can to the subject. This will result in a shallower depth of field within your image. By selectively focusing on the content that you want sharp and clear in your image, your camera will make the adjustment taking into account the aperture settings, the shutter speed settings, the focal length, and the distance you are to your subject of focus. Lastly, I'll talk to you about how to step up your game with perspective. Our next video will be all about perspective and adding intrigue and motion to your images. But by adding perspective to your image, you are able to give the viewer a story behind your photograph. You are able to create movement and intrigue. Try finding a leading line or framed images in nature that are already given to you. A good way to play with the depth of field and really just experiment with perspective and depth of field is to set a bunch of objects just all in a line with each other. Shoot with a lower focal length and play with a lower f-stop, mid-range f-stop, a little bit higher, and then the highest. See how that relationship really changes the look of your image. Get down and get a different perspective of those objects and really play with those f-stop numbers. Zoom in and play with those f-stop numbers. So increase your focal length and play with those f-stop numbers. So when you add perspective coupled with depth of field, you're really going to step up your photography game. In our next video, we'll go way deeper into perspective. So I hope this video was helpful. Leave in the comments below any ways that you use depth of field, the ways that you use perspective, leading line, or different focal lengths to really frame your images. Until next time, I'm Jane Corley with PicVision, Media Arts and Photography. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Until then, see you next time.